Letter writing is the only device for combining solitude with good company. That's from Lord Byron. Today I'm going to talk to you about one of my very favourite things, which is writing letters. I try to write a letter every day, which seems like quite a lot, but Lewis Carroll wrote seven letters on average a day, so it's actually basically nothing. People often ask me about letter writing, how to get into letter writing, what to even write in letters, and today's video I hope will provide an insight into why letters are important, why they're not outdated, why it's something that we should continue to curate and utilise as an art form, and how you can start writing letters too basically. Today's video is also very kindly sponsored by Future Me, which is a platform which lets you write letters to your future self. I think I would go as far as to say that letters are my favourite media form and my favourite form of writing. In a letter, a moment is captured and it's stored and it's preserved and it's actually shared with the person receiving the letter, even though they might be miles away, they might be weeks away from you, and yet that moment is preserved. Liz Stanley, who's one of the most prominent epistolary scholars at the moment, I'm a great fan of her work and I'd really recommend you reading some of her books. Liz Stanley says, Letters share some of the temporal complexities of photographs. They not only hold memory, but also always represent the moment of their production and have a similar flies and amber quality. And I agree with her, but I'd go one step further than that. We often think of video as being the way of capturing a moment. And yes, I think video, I think photography is amazing for doing that. I think it's, I think it's beautiful, but I think letters are just as magical. And I think it's amazing that they've actually been around for so long and basically been capturing moments for centuries, for thousands of years. The world is more than the way it looks. I'm sure you've heard of it's not about the way you look, it's about the way you see. And if video is, is a way of capturing the way that the world looked, then letter writing is a way of capturing the, world, the way that we were seeing the world. And yes, the things that we see are important, but surely it's the way that we see them that is more important. We're more minds than bodies. And letters and writing is able to capture the way, a way of thinking, a, a, a thought. That thought in that particular moment is what's preserved in a letter. Uh, so it's even more remarkable than a photograph, actually, when you think about it. And I think when you think about letters like that, they become something magical. You can go into archives and you can hold a letter which was written a hundred years ago. You're reading it still as the recipient. You're reading it as the recipient would have read it and stored within the material form of the letter, you have this moment which is captured in the words. And I think that's just remarkable. If you ever get a chance to go into archives, then I'd really encourage you to do that. And it's also a special way of binding us together. It connects people. It creates connections. I mean, as Lord Byron says, it's a form of, it's a form of intimacy even when you're apart, even when you're separate, even when you're isolated. I'm actually getting emotional just talking about this. The beautiful thing about writing is that it connects the author and the reader, but in letter writing, it just feels even more intimate than, than that because the, the person writing the letter and the person receiving the letter actually intimately know each other. So it's got that added dimension and a uh, kind of sense of familiarity. It's, uh, I can't remember who, who it was who, who talks about the idea of the implied reader and the implied author in literary scholarship. You know, you, you might argue that the implied reader and implied author are still very much a play in a letter. We're, we're still kind of forming a picture of that person when we write to them, but it's much more intimate and they're more than just implied. The other thing I love about letters is that they're unexpected. I need to find this for you. I love this. So Shana Alexander says, letters are expectation packaged in an envelope. Isn't that great? You receive a letter and it's just, it's exciting. It never gets less exciting. So that's why I love, I love letters. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself because I also want to tell you what a letter is. You know, in its simplest form, what actually is a letter? Because scholars have really struggled to find a definition for a letter. It's such a broad thing. Uh, there are so many different kinds of letters. You've got postcards, you've got like condolence letters, you've got like a calling card in Victorian, in, in the Victorian times would still be a letter. Text messages, emails today, arguably they're still letters. The letters of Cicero, but you've also got open letters. So it's not a tangible one fixed thing. And Stanley actually says that this is probably why letters don't tend to get that much attention as a form within within literary scholarship. As I said before as well, they capture a moment, they're written in a moment, and then they transfer this moment to somebody else. They also are between two people who are physically apart in some sense or another. Even if you were to hand somebody a letter, the expectation would be that they'd read it apart from you. So it becomes a physical object which can move between two people. And some thinkers will also say that it's a dialogue between two people, like going back and forth. Um, but actually, funnily enough, this is what my dissertation was on, uh, kind of complicating that idea of dialogue and arguing that this idea of dialogue is, is mu much too simple and that letters are so much more than that. All right, so practically, who do I write letters to? This is a question I often get asked. Um, people saying, I really want to write letters 
but I don't know who to write to, like, who do I actually get started with writing to, or I don't have any friends who'd be interested in writing a letter back to me, or, you know, how on earth did you manage to find so many pen pals? I don't know why people think the people they know wouldn't want to receive a letter. I have never met somebody who's received a letter from me and said, or like, and seemed, you know, kind of affronted or like upset that I'd sent them a letter. I don't think people dislike receiving them. Uh, I've never met someone who dislikes receiving letters. Even if people don't keep those letters, some people like scan the letters and then get rid of them. In the Victorian period, you often have people burning their letters. Um, but that doesn't mean that the actual moment of receiving it isn't, isn't valued. And so anyone that you can think of writing a letter to, anyone that you want to say something to, that's the person that you write a letter to, you know, start with, I think it can be quite valuable sometimes to start with, you know, like a reason, you like, well, why do you want to write to this person? Or let's say I'm, you know, just in my day to day, I think of somebody or I think of a moment, I think of a memory or I think of a question that I have for somebody. And that could be somebody that I saw last week. It could be somebody I haven't seen for years. I might write them a letter, ask them that thing in a letter, something I could ask in a text message, but, it's more fun to say in a letter, so I might write, oh, I was on a walk the other day and I saw this tree and it really reminded me of that tree that we hugged back in 2012. That's an example, I probably actually, I can't, I've never actually written that, but that kind of thing, having a starting point, having a reason for writing. And that's how pen pals develop. You know, you might send one letter and receive a text message back saying thank you for it, but it's still writing a letter. And I think, I think the cool thing about letters is being able to provide like, provide that moment of expectation and that moment of excitement when, when the letter is received. So who do I actually write letters to uh, and when would I write a letter? I might write for like an occasion, so for somebody's birthday or if someone were getting married. And I tend to turn cards into letters, so I wouldn't just write dear so-and-so from Ruby, I would write a letter within that card. Uh, family members are always a good one to write to, like grandparents for example, distant relatives, friends that you have abroad. And uh, then I have a set of regular pen pals, maybe like seven, eight people that I write to regularly. These are people who also really enjoy letter writing and if you can find one or two people who also really enjoy the act of letter writing. I'm also sometimes surprised by the people who end up wanting to write letters with me regularly. It's not always the people you expect and it often just comes off from sending a one-off letter to somebody, they reply, you reply and it actually turns into a frequent thing. But also I will just say, you know, don't expect to write letters like back and forth all the time. The good thing about letters is that there's not that immediacy which comes with with text messages you can kind of write something and then like you know two months later you might receive your reply and that's okay oh and i also write letters to viewers randomly so i have this spreadsheet of viewers who've kind of opted in they might receive a letter from me at some point i also write letters to viewers and then the final kind of letter writing which you might you might want to venture into and uh, which i've experimented with too is writing letters to yourself for your future self and it's interesting because I think letter writing is strangely a lot like journaling. It's very intimate, uh, you're kind of, you write very openly in a letter and so reading a letter from your past self is like a journal entry. Uh, so this brings me on to the sponsor of today's video which is Future Me and Future Me is a platform which makes it possible to write letters to your future self. Now, um, I really like the idea of writing letters to my future self and having letters stored away but practically it doesn't necessarily work all that well. I know that writing a letter to myself in 20 years, it's very likely that that letter's going to go missing in 20 years because it has to go with you through like moving, uh, through, it, you have to keep it safe, you have to keep it somewhere separate. And it also then by like kind of keeping it there, you don't forget about it. And I think the cool thing about letters is that they're unexpected, you're not expecting them to come. And this is why Future Me is so great. So it's a digital letter that you write to yourself and it will be emailed to you in however many years that that you set. So you might set for, you, for yourself to receive a letter in 20 years time. You're not gonna be expecting that. It's gonna come out of nowhere and you're suddenly going to have this message from this part, from the past, this uh, kind of like this, this bubble of the past appearing in your inbox. Like, how incredible is that? So um, I've written a few letters to my future self on Future Me. I'd really encourage you to do the same because it's just so cool and I haven't received any future letters from myself yet, but I'm really excited to receive them. Um, since Future Me was started in 2002, 12 million letters have been sent through it, which is incredible. And they also have a space for open letters, read other people's open letters. When you receive a letter from yourself, you can also respond to it as an epilogue, which is quite cool. So if you want to sign up for Future Me, if you want to give it a go, then I will leave a link down below in the description box. Hopefully it's a way to kind of get you into the swing of letter writing and then you can start writing to other people too. So I think that leads on quite nicely to what to actually include in a letter. Uh, Cause it's all very well for me to say, write a letter, you should write a letter, but what do you actually include in it? And 
I will say that isn't a rule for it. Um, and I think it would be wrong to be prescriptive about this and say, this is what you should include in a letter because the beauty of letters is that they're not prescriptive, that they don't follow a set standard. They are all different and that's what makes them unique, that's what makes them intimate, that's what makes them special, I think. Yeah, there's not a rule for it. However, these are vague things I might include in my letters. So I like to reflect on the current moment and like situate myself in the current moment. We were talking before about how letters are photographic, how they're able to capture a moment. And so I like to describe the moment that I'm in at the beginning of my letter. I always open like that. That's kind of like, I guess a distinctive thing about my letter writing style. I actually take photos of all of my letters. So if they get lost in the post, I can still send them to somebody. So this is an example from a letter I recently wrote to my friend Bella, who also has a YouTube channel um, and she also writes letters a lot. Her channel's very good, you should look at it. So I said, it's hot today, the kind of hot which makes your neck sting, which makes your skin hypersensitive to even the smallest breathless breeze. I was reading I kept to the castle on a picnic rug under the tree house, but the heat was unbearable, so I'm sat in my armchair instead. Three out of my four bedroom windows open, pigeons cooing from their nest in the rafters above my bedroom. Pigeons have a bad reputation, but their song is my favorite bird call. Other things you might want to include, something which you've maybe struggled to say in person, so if there's a difficult topic you want to discuss, or a question you want to ask, it can be good to put that in a letter. You could also write something complimentary, you know, something that they can treasure and keep and reread. Ask questions, if, if you want to like receive a reply and you want to have a conversation, ask questions as you wouldn't in a normal conversation. You can reflect on memories with them. And mostly I tend to go on tangents and thoughts, honestly. It's like having a conversation and it's like journaling. So I might be, I'll be writing and I'll just go on a massive tangent and say something like, oh, have you ever thought of it like this? Or like, I was just thinking, this is quite an interesting thought. Like my letters, I think letters can get quite philosophical and that's quite, that's really nice. And it's, it's pleasant to have that exchange of ideas. Kind of one of the final things that I just want to talk through is why letters are important historically. First of all, they're from real people. They capture real voices and I think letters are the best way of hearing from historical figures and they're like journal entries as i say they give us an insight into people's thought processes the really cool thing that you see in letters is real relationships um, i did an internship transcribing john germain's letters he was a world war ii poet it's incredible seeing these letters that he sent home to his wife uh, and his daughter and they really capture that sense of love that that sense of, of longing of missing also, if you just want to learn about letter writing etiquette, some more Victorian letter writing etiquette, I did actually film a video for the study tube project on that, so I'll leave that link down below. All right, so the crux of it. Why should you start writing letters? Number one, they can build connections, especially with people that you're distant from. It's a way of showing that you're still thinking about someone, that you, that you care about them, especially good if you're at university, actually. Number two, it's good to journal and reflect in a letter. Um, it's a form of journaling. It can actually be really good for your mental health. And number three, it's a way of making people feel loved, I think. It's a way of showing love. It's a way of bringing a moment of joy, I think, when that letter comes through the post box. Because there is nothing like finding your name on a letter in the post box. So to finish this video, I actually wanted to write a letter with you. I will go to my writing desk, because I have this writing desk in my room. Which is here. And I keep all my letter writing supplies in here. So the first thing is, of course, to actually read the letter. I will read the letter just before I'm about to respond to it, so I won't open it until I know I've got the time to actually write a response. And I like to use just plain letter writing paper, the radio one's my favourite, and I will use a fountain pen. And I like to decorate it, so I'll use stamps, I might use watercolour paints, washi tape.
Next I decorate the envelope, so again with stamps. And I do like to add a nice postage stamp, so this is one of the Romantic Poet ones. I'm down to my last few, it's the Walter Scott one. I take a photo of the letter before I seal it, so I have a copy of it, and then I seal it with sealing wax. I didn't always do this, but I like to do it, and I think it adds a nice special touch to the letter too. But that's everything, so thank you so much for watching this video, thank you Future Me for sponsoring today's video, and I hope that you have a productive week.